good evening and thank you for inviting us here today. The theme of our talk, as you can see, is the battle for the world's most valuable consumer. <coughs> Who is the world's most valuable consumer? 50 plus. My wife. <laughs> uh, no, he's right. It's, uh, it's someone over 50. According to Nielsen, people over 50 are the, quote, the most valuable generation in the history of marketing. But I'm afraid the title of this talk is a little ironic. The sad fact is that there is no battle for the world's most valuable consumer. People over 50 are responsible for almost half of all the consumer spending in the United States. But the marketing and advertising industries essentially ignore them. Only 5% of advertising is aimed at them. Let me tell you a story. One of the most infamous advertising campaigns in the history of the automobile industry was a campaign launched in 1988 called It's Not Your Father's Oldsmobile. The premise was that Oldsmobile was suddenly a vehicle for young people. There were only three problems with this campaign. First, young people couldn't afford and didn't buy new cars. Second, when they did, They'd rather stick a needle in their eye than buy an Oldsmobile. <laughs> and third, the campaign insulted the people who did buy cars. <laughs> Apparently, Oldsmobile thought it was a good idea to malign their real customers and flatter the people who would never buy their products. Why? Because their real, their real customers were older. People in advertising and marketing don't like old people. Marketers, it seems, would rather pander irresponsibly to young people than make real money selling things to older people. The idea of people over 50 driving their cars, drinking their coffee, eating their hamburgers, and wearing their sneakers is so appalling and such an embarrassment that they willfully ignore and disparage the most valuable economic group in the history of the world. Well, believe it or not, the Oldsmobile campaign flopped. And ultimately, as you know, Oldsmobile folded. What hasn't folded, however, is marketers' irrational obsession with young people and disregard of older people. Today, marketers are just as likely to target people simply because they are young and are more likely than ever to ignore and insult the people who actually can afford their products and grow their businesses. Marketers' contempt for and prejudice toward older people is a remarkable and fascinating story. They have volumes of data that tell them about the size and power of the over 50 market. Because, but because of their hardwired prejudices, they're blind to it. It's very much the story of the weapon that is hidden in plain sight. Here's Sharon to tell you a little more about this. Hi. Uh, so let me ask you a question. If you could find a consumer group who controlled 75% of the wealth in the country, were responsible for half of all consumer spending in the nation, dominated 94% of all consumer package categories, who bought 62% of all new cars, who owned 57% of all second and vacation homes and all the stuff that goes with it, who were growing at three times the rate of the remaining adult population, and were far easier and cheaper to reach in media than any other group, would you ignore them? Yes. <laughs> Every day. Every day. Right. Well, that's essentially what advertisers and marketer, marketing community does every day. 
Let me give you some more amazing data about people over 50. Even though many of them are retired, their annual average income is still 55% higher than groups under 50. They account for 55% of all consumer packaged good purchases. In 2010, people over 45 outspent people under 45 in the U.S. by $1 trillion, with a T. People 65 to 74 buy 30% more new cars than people 25 to 34. Baby boomers are the web's largest constituency. Um, and they also spend, on average, $650 a month on technology, which is more than Gen X or millennials. Nonetheless, as Bob said, even though people over 50 are the economic engine that drives the country, only 5% of consumer advertising is aimed at them. How can this be, you might ask? Well, a few decades ago, it was a good strategy to market to 18 to 34 year olds. They were the leading edge of consumer revolution, right? Today, the population bulge that made 18 to 34 year olds so valuable no longer exists. They're now over 50. Forbes calls them the most ignored wealthy people in the history of marketing. <clears throat> Excuse me. They're still the most powerful consumer group the world has ever seen. They're still buying things at a phenomenal rate. They're still the primary drivers of our economic engine, but they're no longer the focus of marketing and advertising activity. The advertising and marketing industries remain obsessed, as Bob said, with 18 to 34 year olds, because that was the smart thing to do at the time, even though the conditions that made them so attractive in the first place have evaporated. Targeting people over 50 is the opportunity of a lifetime for smart marketers. Unfortunately, there don't seem to be many smart marketers around this Because they're not over 50. <laughs> exactly. 80%, uh, thank you for segueing this, 80% of all workers in the professional and business services sectors are under 55. Can you imagine what that number is in marketing departments and advertising agencies? These people have all the numbers you need, all the data that tell them how big and powerful this consumer group is, yet they are blinded by their inexperience, by the myths they've been taught, and by the fairy tales about people over 50. So with that, let's look at some of those fairy tales. Thank you, Sharon. I get to tell you the fairy tales. <laughs> fairy tale number one. People over 50 are downsizing. The reality is people age 55 to 64 outspend average consumers in virtually every consumer product category and some that you would never imagine, including entertainment, food away from home, household furnishings, gifts, and even personal care. Between 1999 and 2009, spending by these people grew by 45%. Fairy tale number two, by advertising younger, you automatically influence people over 50. The reality is, according to the New York Times, the generation gap is wider than at any time since the 1960s. Two thirds of people over 50 say they are less likely to purchase a product if they find the advertising offensive. And guess what? the same two-thirds find that advertising has become cruder and more offensive. Marketers believe that by advertising the 25 to 49-year-olds, they will automatically reach the 50-plus market as what they call spill. <laughs> spill. But a study done by one of our associates recently showed that a typical media plan directed at 25 to 49-year-olds has a 50-plus component of only 15%. Fairy tale number three, people over 50 are stuck in their ways and will not switch brands. The reality is, baby boomers are just as likely as young people to try new products. 61% say that, quote, in today's marketplace, it doesn't pay to be loyal to one brand. And guess what the number is among 18 to 41 year olds? Exactly the same. 
fairy tale number four. Fairy tale, you're in time for the fairy tales. Uh, fairy tale number four. If you get them young, you'll have them for life. This is uh, the lifetime value fairy tale. Uh, a few months ago, the wrongness of this argument was exposed in a study published by the Science Journal, by the journal Science. <laughs> a team of psychologists released a study which discredited what we in the marketing world call lifetime value and which they call the end of history illusion. That is, that the illusion that things will remain the same as they currently are and we will stay like we are now. Here's a quote from the study. When asked to predict what their personalities and tastes would be like in 10 years, people of all ages consistently played down the potential changes ahead, unquote. According to one of the authors of the study, we simply do not realize, quote, how transient our preferences and values are. The idea that someone who's 20 today will be wearing the same clothes, driving the same car, drinking the same beverages, shopping in the same stores in 20 years is just plain silly. It doesn't work that way. Okay, fairy tale number five. People over 50 want to be like young people. This may be the oldest and perhaps the stupidest of the tales. All it is is the narcissistic excuse that young people who dominate the advertising and marketing industries use to not bother learning or understanding older people. The presumption that Steven Spielberg wants to be like Justin Bieber or Michelle Obama is dying to be like the doofuses in the Taco Bell commercials is beyond ridicule. People over 50 are not what the callow practitioners of marketing think they are. They invented the personal computer. They helped develop Google. They grew up listening to the Rolling Stones and smoking weed. They didn't invent sex, but they invented the sexual revolution. Do older people want to be youthful? Yes. Do they want to be like young people? No. This is the distinction that is completely lost on the advertising and marketing community. Okay, to conclude, you're sharing it. Okay, is this, how many people have heard the word doofus in a presentation? <laughs> That's a first. Uh, so it's time for a little honesty. Um, the truth is that many marketers ignore older people because they're embarrassed by them. Uh, marketers are afraid that 18 year olds will, God forbid, see people over 50 using their products and be turned off. Marketers think that people over 50 are decrepit old farts. They can't account for the fact that Barack Obama, Jerry Seinfeld, Condoleezza Rice, Bruce Springsteen, Meryl Streep, and me and Bob, uh, and tens of millions of others are all over 50. In fact, over 60, and by the way, happy 70th birthday to Mick Jagger. These people are healthy, wealthy, and wise and in some ways hipper and more youthful than the marketers themselves. As a former agency president, I'm sorry to say that intelligent business people who come into contact with advertising and marketing people soon discover that too many of the cliches are true. Too many of us in the advertising world are shallow, you know, me excluded, shallow, <laughs> fast talkers who have learned some jargon and some dreadful buzzwords and repeat them endlessly. When it comes to having the imagination and foresight to understand the tremendous opportunity that is staring them in the face, they are often clueless. If we dropped marketing people from Mars, in from Mars, and they looked at the data, they would understand in 60 seconds how important it is to aim marketing activity at people over 50. Unfortunately, our marketing leaders don't come from Mars. They come from New York and LA and Chicago and San Francisco where decades of prejudices and legends have overwhelmed simple, clear thinking. It's true. These people are acting on beliefs and practices that are decades out of date. Their prejudices are costing their companies millions and millions of dollars every year. Nevertheless, we're hopeful. 
We believe that a tipping point is coming, and I think all of you do as well. People over 50 are a large, varied, educated, and affluent group comprised of many subgroups. They can't be ignored much longer. It's incomprehensible to us that the battle for the world's most valuable consumer will continue to be a battle that no one is fighting. We are hopeful that marketing is changing. We're starting to see signs that companies are beginning to put aside the thinking of the past and come to terms with reality. Enjoy the rest of the evening, and thank you for listening.